I suggest turn back hems on anything that has a straight bottom on a pant or sleeve or the bottom of a shirt. If you have a curved hem, like a shirt tail hem, even though that would be turned back in real life, I don't suggest doing that in clo. It doesn't really work and you'll need to create more of a facing. So let's get started with a turn back hem. So first you'll grab your edit pattern tool and holding shift, you can select your front and back hem. Right click on one of the lines and choose offset pattern outline. Enter in the height of the hem that you want. Make sure you check the box for create internal line. And in the drop down menu, you're gonna choose mirror so that it reflects the shape of your hem. If you can't see your internal lines, you can turn them on here. You'll need them for this next bit. Now we're gonna grab the fold arrangement tool in 3D and you're gonna select your hemline and rotate until you can see a circle and you're gonna slide the bottom arrow up inside so that you fold the hem. Make sure you're not sliding it so far that you start to see the gray backside of the fabric. It works with symmetry, but you'll need to do the front and the back separately. If you select the hemline, you'll see in the property editor that basically what fold arrangement does is applies a fold angle to that line, and it's always gonna be a little bit random because you're kind of doing it by hand. So you don't need to do this, but if you wanted to sync up the fold angles on the front and back hems, you can change them to the same number. And I recommend checking the box for fold rendering for this line. It just makes it a crisper line. Next, using edit pattern, you need to select the edges of your hems and right click and choose offset as internal line. We're going to put a line that's twice the width of your hem. So in my case, my hem is one inch. I'm gonna choose two inches and then choose extend to make sure that the line extends all the way to the pattern outline. Then I choose segment sewing and I'm gonna sew my hem to that line. You'll do the same on both the front and the back. Because you're still working on your pant, I'll assume that it's in low res or a 20 millimeter particle distance. So with turn back hems, it's a little bit tricky because you don't wanna change the particle distance while you're working but it's all part of one pattern piece. So it's not like a facing where you could put just the facing at five. So you may find when you simulate, you might have some bits of the hem coming out of the garment, or you might see areas like this where it just looks like a weird dimple in the mesh. And that just has to do with it being in low res. If you do have parts coming out, you can use your select mesh tool to push those back inside. The way this works is you can marquee over areas and then in 3D, you left click once to get your gizmo and you're gonna either push or pull it out with your blue line. But things like the little dimple at the side seam, don't worry about that, it'll go away when you put the garment in high res. To add top stitching, I've grabbed my segment top stitch tool and I'm just gonna click on the line that we sewed the hem to I can see that the top stitch ended up above the line, so in the property editor, I'm gonna check the box for flip. I'll do the same for the front pattern as well. If you don't see the flip option, grab your edit top stitch tool and select the top stitch. You can see I've already customized my top stitches in the object browser, and this video is not gonna cover top stitching in depth. If you need to learn top stitching, I'll link the Clo video that includes that in the description below. When we folded our hems, I recommended that you check fold rendering on for the fold line. And the reason I do this is that when you uncheck it, the hem can get quite round. And there's also a shadow that happens sometimes that looks a bit odd and puffy. Now let's talk about puckering. So if you go up here to the puckering tab in the object browser and click on the default, you're gonna see there's already a normal map in there. If you click the four dots beside it, You'll see the Clo normal map files for puckering. You have to go back one folder and they're all in order. They're not organized very well, but this is currently how I'm finding them. And you'll see the different options here. So this is where you have to find the normal maps. But in the hardware and trims folder, there's a puckering folder. And this has PNGs that are all the texture images. So what those are is basically a wash effect and the normal map just gives you a shadow. So if I grab my segment puckering tool and I apply it to the fold of the hem, it has the same flip option in the property editor as top stitching in case you don't see anything happening. I'm gonna apply it to the back as well. From here we can edit. So I'm just going to change my fabric to a color. 
so that you can see what the wash effect looks like. Then I'll go back to the puckering tab and select default puckering to make my edits. If you're using the wash effect, you can apply a color that's similar to your pant color, but a little bit lighter or darker, depending on what you prefer. Or you can keep the white color and you can raise or lower the opacity depending on what you prefer there. In my case, I'm actually going to just delete my texture image and just use the normal map for now. You can click the drop down arrow next to normal map and change the intensity to make it more or less intense. Here you can change the width of the puckering and density basically scrunches or spreads out the puckering. So the percentage value is basically against your map so the larger the value, the more spaced out it is because it's actually stretching out the map. Here you can see a sped up version of me playing with the puckering. So I create three different types. I use two different densities at the bottom edge because I just found that having the front and back identical made it look too uniform. And then I use a different default where the stitch is because I made that one a little bit tighter looking. In the object browser, you can copy puckering and make a slight tweak or you can click add and create a whole new one. Here I've noticed that my inseam and outseam top stitching doesn't continue to the edge of the hem. So I grab my edit top stitching tool and just drag these down to the bottom. Then I'm gonna choose a top stitch to apply to the bottom edge. So this is only important if you're gonna do something like this where I hid the avatar and you can kind of see inside the hem of the pant. This is just to make it hyper realistic. We also need to grab our edit sewing tool and extend the outseam and inseam sewing all the way to the hem. When you offset the pattern outline, it doesn't do this automatically. You're not gonna notice it unless you're able to see inside the pant, but this is how you fix it. Last, I'll put my garment in high res using the high res garment button and show you guys the final render of my hem.